been shaping boards for? I started shaping surfboards when I, I, I think I was towards the end of my sophomore year. I used to get school credit for shaping surfboards. And, uh, so I was about age 15, 16 years old. My dad used to have to drive me to the glass shop because I wasn't driving yet. How do you price your boards? Is there a big market for these? Any special ones? Well, you, you have to price price the boards according to, to the market demand, to uh, cost of supplies or overhead. And, and during the course of the years, you know, oil keeps going higher. Surfboards are a big part of the oil um, product. So you gotta price it according to the profit margins you wanna make. And to be honest, there's not big profit margins in surfboards compared to, say, surfing apparel. Uh, so you have to put all those variables and, and come up with the margin you think you can sell your boards at. How has the surf industry changed since you started shaping surfboards? When I started shaping surfboards, uh, there was very, very little big industry. I, I think Quicksilver had just started. They were maybe doing forty million dollars in revenue. I, I got. I started shaping surfboards. Must have been seventy-seven or seventy-eight. There, Gotcha Sportswear wasn't even there. There wasn't even a billabong. Uh, I think there was a rip curl. You had sponsors for Tommy Curran. You know, no one was making millions of dollars in the surf industry. You were shaping surfboards, you could make a living. Not a wealthy living, not like today with, you know, you have these surf companies like Quicksilver, they do $1.8 billion. They trade on the, on the New York Stock Exchange. You got Billabong, they're doing $1.6 billion in revenue. They trade on the Australian uh, Stock Exchange. You have companies that, Vulcan that started off and got bought out by the parent company of uh, Gucci. I think they're called PPR. So the industry has gone from a, a basically an underground industry to probably a, I, I don't know, a six, probably eight billion dollar industry today. This is fantastic growth. How did it affect you when Clark Foam was shut down? When Clark Foam shut down, it was devastating. Clark Foam was like family. They took care of me. I mean, how many companies were uh, just a local shaper like me could call them to get custom blanks? You know, two months before they, they shut down, they got me balsa wood from Ecuador and cedar wood. I made this beautiful balsa wood surfboard. Uh, so, I, you know, so all of a sudden the main supply, they supplied over 90% of the blanks for the surfing industry, and all of a sudden they're gone. Yeah, I was fortunate, I always stockpiled blanks, I had contacts where I could still get phone. But it completely disrupted the industry and you know, the industry is really only just recovering and I can't recall how many years ago Clark went out, but to, in my opinion they were still the best in their service and in their quality and so it, it affected everyone. Make sure I don't badmouth anyone. <laughs>